we're gonna begin drawing our toucan. And you're gonna do it in pencil, but I'm doing it in Sharpie first just so that you can see it better on the screen. As soon as you finish your drawing in pencil, then you will go over all of your pencil marks with Sharpie. We're gonna start on this side of our paper and we're gonna start with the eye first. So not quite in the middle, but a little bit further to the right, you're gonna draw a small circle that you're gonna fill in lightly with pencil. Remember, draw light until you get it right. Over that part, you're gonna do an eye shape. So to make it kind of like an eye or football shape, you're gonna start by drawing a frown kind of above the eye and then connect it with a smile down below the eye. Next, we're gonna get um, ready to draw the back part of the beak. So starting a little bit further away from your eye and a little bit above it, you're gonna do kind of like a parentheses or a curved line down, and then a smaller one that connects down towards the bottom of that. Now we're gonna work on the beak. So starting at this top part, I want you guys to curve a line and bring it almost all the way out to the edge of your paper. And then starting down at this line, you're gonna do another curved line and bring it all the way over to where you ended that first line. And there's gonna be the beak of our toucan. You're gonna start right here and you're gonna draw another straight kind of curved line back over to make the top and the bottom beak separate. Now we're gonna go back and work on the head. So starting here, you're gonna come up and down and go off the very edge of your paper. And now for the chest and kind of neck, you're gonna start right here and you're gonna come in and then go back out a little bit and come all the way off the bottom of your paper. Now we're gonna go back and work a little bit on the beak. So starting here, a little bit further away from what you did, you're gonna kind of redo that same kind of curved line, but just a little bit further away. And then starting right here on this middle line, you're gonna do almost like a half circle that connects back to the front there. Now we're gonna work on part of the face. So starting right here, you're gonna draw a really large backwards C that comes all the way down and around and comes down towards the chest. And then starting right here, you're gonna draw another kind of smile that connects back to that line you just drew. Now we're gonna work on the wing. So starting on the edge of your paper, you're doing a curved line all the way over and down off the bottom. Starting up here in the wing, you're gonna do almost like a bunch of lowercase w's that are connected. So I'll do a w, w, and kind of keep on going until you can't go anymore. And you're gonna do three of those. And now that I'm here, I'm gonna draw a couple of vertical lines that kind of curve a little bit backwards all the way to the very bottom of my paper. So now that you've finished yours in pencil, if you like the way it looks and you're ready for Sharpie, then I'll pass those out in a minute. If you don't really like the way something looks, like maybe your beak is too skinny, then feel free to erase that part and redraw that part. Or if you'd rather try it again, then you may use the back of your paper to try it a second time. Whenever you have the side that you like, every single place that you drew pencil needs to be covered up with a Sharpie line. So there should be no just plain pencil showing. There's one more thing I would like you to do with your Sharpie and that's to color in this part here and this part here. So using your Sharpie, you're gonna color in this section all completely black, nice and neat. And 
and then also the little kind of semicircle, almost half heart shape here on the top of its beak. That you are also going to color in completely black. Doing it as neatly as you can. It's not a race to be done. Take your time. Make sure it stays inside your lines. All right. Now that I am finished with that, I put my marker and lid back together. You guys can go turn in your Sharpies to the front. When you come back to your seat, flip your paper over. And on the back in pencil, please write your name and your class code. Even if you have a drawing back there, just go ahead and write it back there anyways. And then as soon as you have this, we will be ready for the next part, which I will show you in a couple minutes. The next thing we're going to do is add in some oil pastel to the beak. And the technique we're going to use, which is blending, um, is going to make it look really realistic. So I'm going to show you what colors I want you to use, where I want you to use them, and then how you're going to blend them together. First, we're going to zoom in and get a little a bit closer to our beak so we can see it up close. All right, when you get your oil pastels, sometimes there are ones that are broken, sometimes there are nice big ones. Broken pastels still work, and in fact, if your pastels are broken, that actually allows you and your neighbor to share them better. So you're gonna start with an orange. You also might use some yellow, and I'm gonna use a little bit of kind of this reddish orange as well. So kind of red, oranges, and yellows. If you'd rather use um, this kind of orangey yellow, that's fine too, I'll leave that up to you. You're gonna start with an orange oil pastel and you're gonna start by kind of outlining the inside part of the top beak. If you don't push very hard, it looks like this, which is not very bright. You need to push hard to get a nice kind of dark line of orange close to the edge. So I'm gonna go here, 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 and here. So you need to do that part in orange. I'm also gonna add a little bit of orange, just a stripe kind of sort of about halfway down this beak, but leave that back part um, blank. If you have little bits of oil pastel like that on your paper, remember don't brush them off or they smear. Blow them off instead. I'm now gonna take my yellow and I'm gonna go back in the center here and color all that in yellow. And it's okay if your yellow touches your orange, it will actually help kind of blend them together better. So don't worry if they touch and smear a little bit, that's actually what we want. I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow in this back part here that I didn't color. And then I'll go back with kind of my orangey red or your red and add a little bit of red down here at the very, very bottom. All right. It looks really cool right now, but it's going to get even better because you're going to use this magical tool, your finger. Please only use one. Don't use your entire hand or it gets your paper really dirty. Also try and hold your other hand somewhere where it's nice and uh, clean and you aren't going to have to worry about this hand getting dirty too. So I'm going to use just one finger and I'm going to blend. So I'm going to kind of use my finger and I'm pushing fairly hard and being really careful around the edges. I'm kind of blending my orange and my yellow together and it makes it look pretty realistic. Okay, I'm kind of just pushing it and kind of pulling it so that they blend together and it's not just a straight kind of um, stripe anymore. It looks really nice and blended. Okay, I'm also gonna use my finger and I'm gonna drag from the dark color into my light color. So I'm gonna kind of drag the red over this way. Blow off that little extra bit there. And again, be careful around your edges. And kind of fill all that part in there. Okay, and now I have a pretty realistically um, sh shaded and kind of drawn beak. Um, that's going to be what we have time for today. We'll come back and do the other parts later next week. But if you get this finished, then you need to put your oil pastels away. If you just toss them back in the box and you try to put the lid on, the lid's not going to fit. So please line them up the proper way. Make sure they're all going back in a line. If you have broken pieces, try and li line up the same color broken pieces together. Usually that makes them fit pretty well in the box. Um, that's better than just kind of tossing them back in there. So try to fit them back in as neatly as you can. And if you can't fit them all, then kind of just find a nice neat way to just kind of put the extras in there like this. If you've done it correctly, the box lid should fit back on top with no problems. If you're finished today, this can go in your table folder and I will have some collectors help me collect supplies in a minute.